Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you an update that I made to my VoiceFlow e-commerce chatbot. Uh, pretty much, I introduced the ability to track orders for customers, and I plugged it into Shopify and into Google Sheets, uh, specifically because we sell items that are in stock and out of stock. The out of stock are pre-sales. Um, so for all items that we sell, the details come in through Shopify, and we're able to pull out tracking information. For stuff that's on pre-sale that's not in stock, uh, it remains as unfulfilled, uh, but we do have a Google sheet, which lists all of these pre-sale items. And it also has an expected dispatch date, uh, against each order. Um, so basically this flow gets the order information from Shopify. Uh, if it's fulfilled, it just gives the tracking information. If it's unfulfilled, it then, um, checks Google sheets to see if it can get some more, uh, pre-order information. So like expected dispatch date, and then it gives it to the customer. And uh, this flow, it has email and order number authorization. So I'll show you how this works and then I'll show you the build. But I've got a sample order here. Um, the sample order, unfortunately, it's because it's a sample, it's on our test account. I cannot, um, it doesn't, uh, it, I haven't set it up where it has um, the pre sale item listed on that Google Sheet. But you can see how this works. We've got the order number, we got the order email. And here we found that there are two items on this order, uh, product A, which is fulfilled and it has a tracking URL. Uh, my actual live, um, live tracking shows the tracking number as well, which is appended to the URL here. And, uh, I've got item B, which is unfulfilled. Then the sequence just goes and says, let me see if I can find some more information because item B, this is a test order. It doesn't exist in that Google sheet. You won't see it, but it normally would have, um, it would just basically state the item and then state the expected dispatch date of like 10th of January, 2024. Um, but for this flow, since it couldn't find any more information, it just has a fallback where you can leave a message for the customer support team, or you can just give it another day, for example. So let's break down this flow and you can see the entire flow is here. Uh, this first section until I think it's about here, this is the Shopify, uh, order details. Here, I check if the order is fully fulfilled or has, uh, or is like partially fulfilled. So has some unfulfilled items. And then if any unfulfilled items, it just uh, tracks them on Google sheets. And if it finds it, then it delivers that information to the customer. If it doesn't find it, it basically says, Hey, do you want to contact customer support? And then it just closes the loop off to like, do you have any more questions or whatever else? So let's dive into this. Um, I've got an intent block that goes from my um main um my main chat window you can click the button to track the order or you can just say track order and then it goes into this intent block we capture the order number we capture the order email address we make the call to shopify and in here i i capture the response into two variables i capture the entire response into a variable shopify call and then i capture the orders information uh, into a Shopify response variable. So over here, I have like my email authorization, which is basically to check that the entire response that I received from that API call, I checked that it actually has a response in it. So the length is greater than zero. If it is greater than zero, it means that the email address did return. Um, it did return a bunch of active orders. That's why I've appended my uh, order email variable here. And if it is, if there's no length, so it's empty, then it just results as fail. And then it basically just goes and says, Hey, your order number and your email, it, we didn't find any information for, for orders against that. Um, but okay. Continuing forward, let's say the actual variable, uh, is, has something inside it. We then, we then get the order number that we have. And we find the, um, we find the block of information relating to that order number. And then we get that entire block of information, which is like fulfillment details, tracking details, line item, like products, all that kind of stuff for that specific order. And we save it to a variable called selected order. And again, here, if, if we cannot find the order number within any of the orders listed, because this API call. Um, it'll return all of the orders associated to that email address. So if there's only been one order, then 
that order should, you know, the order number should reflect that, that one order that's there. But if they've made, let's say 10 orders, you're going to have 10 separate blocks of orders and you want to find the block that's relating to the order number. So again, if they put the order number in incorrectly here, um, or just there is no, you know, order, or, sorry, order number corresponding uh, or to that email address, then it, you know, comes into this sequence where it's like, hey, your order number or your email address, we didn't find, you know, those two criteria did not result in um, any orders. Do you want to try again? I've got these as um, incomplete blocks because I've just copied and pasted this entire sequence here, but you would just plug this back into like, this block here to capture the order number and email address. Maybe you have a different prompt here that says like, just can you make sure you use the actual email or order from your order, if you want to be clear, or you could contact support in case there's some kind of bug or something's going on. And then you can take this to the sequence where you collect the customer's information and then you submit a ticket or, you know, you go to live chat or whatever you want to do. So assuming that the email did return orders and that we did find the order number within that, the orders that were returned from that email, um, we now extract the specific fulfillment details related to the order, the stuff that we want to get. And this is where I build out a fulfillment details variable. Um, and this is, uh, let's see here, this is what this fulfillment detail variable is. So, um, there's two ways that I've actually built out the response to the customer in my Google sheets. So the section two, I actually build out, uh, the, the individual variables bit by bit. So I'll say product and then I'll save the product variable name, a uh, product name variable. Then I'll say quantity and then the quantity variable and then X, Y, and Z, you know, to build out um, the actual information that I need. But in my first flow for the Shopify, I've just packed it up into one individual variable. Um, and I mean, it, it really depends what you want to do. Like if you pack it into one block like this, then obviously you have less control over the delivery. Um, but if you, you know, split out quantity, SKU variable, um, product name variable, fulfillment status variable, tracking URL variable, then you can like really create more dynamic uh, responses. But as a fee one, I just kept it like this. So pretty much um, I've got a first section here, which just looks to find any uh, warranty or service related products. So Shopify will return these as if they are actual products because we saved them into our Shopify um, as actual products. So Navidium shipping protection will show up as unfulfilled and extended warranty will show up as unfulfilled in our specific case uh, or my specific case. So I've just got a, um, I've got this uh, function here to just whenever, you know, whenever you see Navidium shipping protection or extended warranty, because um, we've got extended warranty, this is a string that exists in all of our extended warranty products, um, you know, for product A, B and C extended warranty. I've just got, if you see any of these, just do not include them in the response. So sometimes, sometimes I'll have an order that includes, you know, shipping protection, but I do not show that to the customer because there's no value for them to see Nvidium shipping protection as unfulfilled. Um, and then that'll just unnecessarily trigger the um, Google Sheets pathway as well. Um, and then after this, you can kind of like pause the video and just see what, you know, what else I wrote here. But I'm pretty much um, in this first section, finding the fulfilled items and then iterating, uh, iterating across all of the uh, fulfilled items to obtain the SKU, the item title, and then the fulfillment status, and then the tracking number, and then the um, tracking URL. And I've got some fallback messages if I can't find the number in like my test case here. I don't, you know, I, I didn't have a, a tracking, a tracking number. So it, it didn't show actually, this is my test test. I've kind of, I've kind of got a couple of flows going on here, but it should show here tracking number. And then it should give this number and then it will have uh, tracking URL and show this if there was no number or URL available, uh, but it was fulfilled, then it would just return these messages or no tracking information available, these messages. And then uh, over here, we have the second uh, or third part of the function, but the second key part of the function, which is to find all unfulfilled items. So it just iterates through the list. Again, it builds out by SKU, by item title and then fulfillment status. And then yeah, it saves it to that variable, which is uh, fulfillment details. And then I essentially, um, I look at fulfillment details and I see if there are any, um, any mentions or essentially any products that have the unfulfilled status. If there are any that have the unfulfilled status, then I have the check pre-sales pathway. 
and then the check pre-sales pathway, um, it, it, it goes off to my Google Sheets. So uh, over here, this is the message where we deliver the customer details, uh, the order details, and then we say, hey, let me see if I can find some more information. So this is where it is. We deliver fulfillment details, which is this as a variable. And then we have another message that just basically says, hey, I'm gonna check if I can get some more details. In most cases for us, because this is a test order, you couldn't see it, but it would then go into Google Sheets and then find the actual information and then return it. Uh, but over here, you can see that I uh, make the call and then I save the entire, or I save the values portion of the response into a pre-order response variable. Um, okay. And then here I find the, um, I find the, the details corresponding to my, uh, to my order. Where are we pre-order response to my order number. And then, um, I essentially save my variables, pre-order details to so initialize a variable that I'm going to hold the information in. So whatever, you know, if I find, um, a match from the API response. Um, that matches that I've actually found against the order number, then I save the um, that portion of details to a pre-order details uh, variable, and I take it down the order found pathway. The order found pathway uh, is to here. And in this example, like I mentioned before, I saved all of this, all the individual variables to one variable. Um, but for the Google Sheets, just to mess around, I saved it into individual variables. So then I, I get my pre-order details and um, it's essentially like a, it's a, I think it's a string and it has just five different bits of information in it. Uh, and those five bits of information, I just pull them out from their position um, in that string. And I say product name, original date and current date. And current date is what I deliver in my response to the customer. Uh, current dispatch date. So it would list the product name. For example, if this was here, it would just list one times SP 039 12 volt pump. And then uh, below it, it would say current dispatch date, 10th of January, 2024, whatever it is. And then if I have no pre-order found, I basically say, hey, um, I wasn't able to find any more pre-order information, which is what it, you know, what it says here. Um, and then I have like whatever other, you know, whatever other flow that I want from here. Um, why do I have this flow? I just have it because for example, right now, we're transitioning to a new, um, a new career. So some of the information is not sent back to Shopify. Like some of the tracking details aren't sent back to Shopify in these early days of the transition. So I have this as a fallback of saying, um, you know, we don't have the information. Do you want to give it another day? I'll probably make this a little bit sharper, but that's why I, I had this flow. Um, but yeah, you can see here, yes, I want to leave a message. It just goes to my, um, leave a message block, which is just creating a ticket in Zendesk, which is a separate flow or no, thanks. I'll give it another day. Okay. Sure thing. And then do you have another question? And then this goes back to my uh, question loop. And if that's it, if they don't have any other questions, it just, uh, ends. So yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, order tracking using uh, Shopify to get the entire order details for anything that's unfulfilled. I check it against our pre-sale information. Um, and yeah, this is uh, pretty nifty.